King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing his wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end. Our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. Might be the biggest crowd we've had I see Kay's back she just I don't know if that was a high five or what that was back there but thumbs up we got it all going on back there Kay thank you but I believe this might be the biggest crowd that we've had since we started coming back on Sunday morning it's good to see that we hope that's a trend that keeps up it's always good to have everyone here it's it's good to see everyone we're glad to have any visitors that we may have this morning we hope that you will fill out a card and that's out there on the round table, leave it on, on the table as you leave. We'd like to have a record of your attendance. And we want to welcome everyone that's online with us this morning. We appreciate that. There's also a way that you can give us a record of your attendance online as well. You know, this, this time that we have to worship when we come in is special. It's, it's God's day. It's what we gather for. It's what we're here to do. We'll leave all those worries of the world outside these doors and we'll worship God this morning. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we, we thank you so much for this day. We just ask that you be with us in all that we do, that you continue to guide us and protect us, that you continue to bless this congregation. Dear Lord, we pray that as we go through, we do everything to bring nothing but honor and glory to you. We pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Let's worship together. Good morning, y'all. not taking the time yet to do this. And we are asking that you would send us a list of your favorite songs. Um, it, it helps us, because sometimes as uh, song leaders we get into a, we might call it a groove, you might call it a rut, but um, just the things we pick, so that will help us to think more widely. So please share your list with us um, to songleaders at spring-creek.org. And that magically goes to all of the song leaders, even a newbie like me. So, all right. We're going to start this morning with our kids' songs, and then we'll go into our uh, other songs. So, you would sing with me. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and Give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Let's do it again. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Some of you are hoping we were doing the arky arky part. We're not going to do that this morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> now we're going to talk sing about the joy of the Lord. I've got the joy 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 down in my where down in my heart where down in my heart I've got the joy 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 down in my heart 
where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Oh, hold on. There we go. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got he surpasses understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. All right. Awesome. All right. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. I will not falter, I will not faint. He is my shepherd, I am not afraid. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. He will uphold me all of my days. I am surrounded by mercy and grace. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. I will not waver walking by faith. He will be strong to deliver me safe. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm. Oh, happy day that fixed my choice on my Savior and my God. Well, may this glowing heart rejoice and tell its raptures all abroad. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sin away. 
He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Oh, happy bond that seals my vows to him who merits all my love. The cheerful anthem fill this house, while to that sacred shrine I move. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day happy day happy day when jesus washed my sins away tis done the great transactions done i am my lord's and he is mine he drew me and i followed on charm to confess the voice divine happy day happy day when jesus washed my sins away he taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day happy day happy day when jesus washed my sins away amen i don't know if you've caught on yet <laughs> I, I I can't tell if you are. It's an honor system, you know. But I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has on desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay till some may dwell where those abound my prayer my aim is higher ground lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land a higher plane than i have found lord plant my feet on higher ground i want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright but still i'll pray till heaven i've found lord lead me on to higher ground lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land a higher plane than i have found lord plant my feet on higher ground <clears throat> Mm. 
rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Cleanse me from its guilt and power, not the labor of my hands can fulfill the law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Bow I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning, family. It's so good to see all of y'all out here, and it's good to see you online. I can't see you, but I'm glad that you can see all of us worshiping here. If y'all would, bow your head as we pray for the, the bread. Father, Lord, we are so grateful for the love that you show us every single day. The love that you showed us this morning, that you allowed us to wake up and have the chance and opportunity to worship you. We're thankful, Lord, that you had a perfect plan for each of us. You knew that we needed a Savior. You knew that we needed our sins to be washed away, and you knew that we needed you. As we take this bread that represents our Savior's body, we ask that you help us to focus on that focus on the redemption that you provided for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you bow with me again. Dear Lord, we sometimes we don't have the words to express how much thanks we have for all that you've done for us. We try to tell you, and we are so grateful that the Holy Spirit interprets our words so that you can understand how we feel. This morning we come so, so grateful. I'm grateful that we know you love us, I'm grateful that you're the rock that doesn't move, that we can always call upon, and most grateful that you sent your son down to this earth to live a perfect life so that we could have the wonderful, wonderful promise of heaven with you. As we take the fruit of the vine, we ask that you help us to remember Christ's blood that was shed for us. Let the church say amen.
now we have the opportunity that we're so grateful for to give back a portion of what God's given us. As the IT guy, I am also extremely thankful that we can now give online. So if you like that option or use that option, you now can. Um, in addition to that, we have a basket in the back. We can mail whatever you need to do to be able to give back what you are so thankful to give to our, our Savior so that we can continue to spread the word to all those that have never heard it. Please bow with me. Lord, we are thankful for the blessings that we have. Sometimes we overlook them. Sometimes we don't realize what we do have, but when we take a look around, we can see we have homes, we have clothes, we have cars, we have a building to worship you in. We have the ability to worship you without, without interference, without a safety concern. We're just, Lord, we are so, so thankful. And as we have this chance to give back to you, help us most importantly to do so with a cheerful and joyful heart. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning we'll be reading from Psalm chapter 51, verses 10 through 12. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. If y'all bow with me. Lord, we are so grateful for the joy that you provide us. We know there's a difference between happiness and joy, but we know that with you, we can be joyful always. We know that you are always with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. You have a perfect plan for us. And when things are not going the way that we think they should or that we, we had planned that they will, it is comforting to know that you have a plan for us. We may not understand it, but we are grateful that it's there. Help us to have open eyes and an open heart to accept this. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus I surrender, humbly at His feet I bow, worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me Jesus, take me now, I surrender all, I surrender To Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give my 
myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power. Let Thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender <clears throat> Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Good morning. I think I turned on. It's a new set. Am I? Okay. It is good to be with you this morning. If you're visiting with us, I want to take a moment to say welcome to Spring Creek. We are glad that you're here. Uh, we hope that you will fill out a visitor's card on the round table in the foyer so we can have a record of your attendance. If you're with us online, there is a connection card or something in the comments uh, that you can tell us you're visiting. We'd love to know that you're there so we can say welcome there, but we are glad that you're here and that you're with us at Spring Creek. Um, I want to remind everybody of a couple of things. One uh, is that next, or that, yes, next Sunday is our anniversary Sunday. So uh, 18 years, we're going to do the regular schedule, uh, sort of. We're, we're not doing fellowship meals right now, but we're going to do the rest of the regular schedule. We'll have Bible classes at 10, worship at 11, and then we will be out for the afternoon. There'll be no evening service next week. I uh, want you to remember that we will have, I want you to know that we're going to have a special speaker in, Eric Bishop, uh, who is our newest mission effort. He's going to come on February 21st and he's going to speak uh, at the morning service. And so you'll want to be here or tune in for that to meet Eric uh, and, and I, I'm guessing his family. Um, but to, to meet them, there are some, there are a group we're going to get to know uh, as we move forward. Tonight is congregational meeting at 5 p.m., and so I would encourage you to be here uh, or online for that uh, in order to, to hear what goes on there. I will ask you to turn over to Joshua chapter 8 this morning. Joshua 8. We're talking about new beginnings, talking about what happens as we move forward uh, into a new year and move forward uh, just in, in life in general. We, we are, are always you know, looking at what it is that's ahead of us, always looking at what it is that God has in store for us. And so looking at a time as we do that, this morning we come to Joshua chapter 8, which is a time of renewal. When we talk about covenant renewal in, in the Old Testament, we talk about those periods of time that folks stop to remember what God has done, to celebrate what God is doing, and then to look forward to what it is that God has planned in their lives. And we come in the book of Joshua uh, several times to these times of renewal. We could go back to Joshua chapter 5 and talk about the circumcision at Gilgal. You can go uh, forward, I think, to Joshua 12 as we talk about the list of enemies that were defeated by Moses and by Joshua. We go to 22, we go to 24, we go to, and we have those specific times when there is an emphasis on coming before God and saying, we remember 
what it is that you've done. We are celebrating what it is that's happening today, and we look forward to what it is that's going on in the future. Those days, those moments of renewal are meant to be a place for us to, to stop and say, who are we? They are statements of identity. They are statements of purpose. They are statements of, of how we exist in our relationship with God. When we deal at any point in time with who we are as people, it's important for us to understand what it is that God has designed us for. Mark Twain wrote, once wrote that the two most important days in anyone's life are the day that they are born and the day that they understand why. What are you doing in your life in terms of purpose, in terms of identity, in terms of what it is that's going on? It is these times of renewal in the Old Testament that point us to see that question in light of what it is that God uh, has in terms of purpose and what it is that God has in store for his people in terms of what we wear as our identity. That God says, what are the most important things that happen in your life? Now, it's amazing to me that in Joshua, we have so many times when the people do that because the book of Joshua is oftentimes uh, we look at it and say, this is a book about battle. This is a book about conquest. This is a book about armies. And this is a book about coalitions. And this is a book about God fulfilling promise through, through his people as they work towards this very particular end. When we get to chapter 8, what we've seen is that in chapter 6, uh, the Jericho has fallen. In chapter 7, um, what we get is we get, in, in the beginning of chapter 8, is we get a, a resounding defeat at Ai that because of one man's greed, because of one man's personal agenda, because of one man's desire to feed only himself, the people have fallen to Ai, and the nation has to repent to come to something different. That what happens is that God restores who they are. And so in chapter 8, we come out of this, def this victory, defeat, victory sort of situation into this place. When is the best time to renew? Best time to renew is all of the time. And we see that in Joshua. We see that in those moments that we come to this place and say, this is what we're going to do when we see what it is that God has in store for us. In Joshua chapter 8, starting in verse 30, um, the writer says this, At that time, Joshua built an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, on Mount Ebal. Just as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the people of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses. And so we could go back to Deuteronomy and see where it is that Moses told them to do what it is that they're about to do. Okay? That Moses said, when you get into the land, I want you to seek out a very specific place at Mount Ebal, and I want you to do some very specific things, like write the book of the law very large on, on those mountain faces and on those stones that you'll gather and on those. And so this is one of those things that Moses has set out. Um, an altar of uncut stones upon which no man has wielded in an iron tool. And they offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. And so what we see in this place of renewal, what we see in this place is the people say, who are we supposed to be? What is our purpose in this place? Remember, Joshua, we look at and say it's a book about conquest. It's a book about battle. It's a book about... But really, it's like every other book in, in the Bible, it is a, it is a book about identity. It is a book about the work of God. It is a book about how God transforms His people. See, the victories that are won, the armies that are overcome, the, the battles that are fought are never determined specifically by the people that God leads. The outcomes of those never depend on the strength of the armies of Israel. Well, but at Ai they fell because one man did yes. One man in his greed caused God to say, you will not win. But that battle was determined by the Lord. It didn't matter how big Israel's army was, how good the battle plan was, that, that failure was determined because God said the, the situation of your heart is unclean. The situation of your heart is impure. And so you cannot win in that situation. Why did Ai come back and win? Because of repentance and because God had decided that the state of the heart of Israel was in a place where it needed to be. It was in a place where they had come back to wearing their identity, right? See, when we start looking at new beginnings, we always start with nurturing the truth. 
And the truth is, the people of God have purpose. All of the people of God have purpose. All of the people of God have an identity that we are called to wear. We all are put here in order to be what God wants us to be. Now, a lot of times we go to purpose in a statement like this and say, well, what is my purpose? I have been alive for 50 years and I still don't know what God's purpose for me is yet. I think we stick purpose into what makes me happy, what makes me passionate, what makes me successful, what makes me all of these things that are supposed to be ever so fulfilling. I believe that following the purpose of God fulfills an individual. But I do believe that God's purpose in our life is not a thing that's hidden. It's not a thing that's secret. It's not a thing that um, we, we look at and go, well, what is this? I also don't, don't think that the purpose of God in our lives is always as individualistic as we think. I think we are gifted by God and that our passions flow into our giftedness. And I think that our giftedness brings a certain amount of contentment or a certain amount of fulfillment. But even our giftedness has to to give way has to be subordinate to has to obey the authority of God's purpose and has to follow what the purpose of God is we cannot simply say because I'm gifted in this area I get to if it doesn't follow God's purpose it doesn't follow in the will of God then we understand that the change happens in us not in what it is that God desires so to say the people of God has purpose have purposes to just to draw a broad statement that God looks at us and says, you have purpose in this life. And I believe that that purpose can be found in Genesis chapter 1, when God in the very beginning starts to talk about what humanity is going to be. Let us make man in our own image. That the purpose of mankind is to be conformed and to be transformed into an image which tells the world who God is which shows the world what God is about, which shows the world that there is a God in Israel, that there is a God in Canaan, that there is a God who walks amongst us. We can look at that statement throughout the, the course of, of biblical literature and say that's what God is always calling for, is for us to be conformed to the image that He has for us. Right? Now, it's funny because in Joshua chapter 8, what we see in the very beginning picture is that we see them at worship, that they are setting up an altar of uncut stones. See, the, the idea of being a people of purpose means we are a people of worship, that what we do and what we are in life flows from the relationship that we have with God. What is worship? Well, worship is the place that I go Sunday mornings uh, because there's a specific command and, you know, i got an hour to kill. Right? Worship is a place that I go to see my friends and um, feel good about what it is that I do. Worship is a place that I go because my family has always gone. Worship is a habit that I've, you know, kind of gotten into and it's hard to get out of. Worship is, we have a lot of things in a lot of ways that we think about worship. But when we begin to look biblically at what worship is, worship is the place where God promises to meet us in a way that He doesn't meet us at any other time. Is God in every moment that we're in? Absolutely. Is God in everything that we do? Yes, He is. But God has appointed a specific time and a specific place for us to get together. We have a five-year-old in our family. Do you know when that happened? That happened yesterday. Okay? Now, I want to tell you about my week. Okay? On Thursday, when she got in the car, she said, Daddy. Three more sleeps till my birthday. And I said, I, I don't think it's three. I, I think it's just two. She goes, really? I said, yes, I think it's just two. And she said, okay, two more sleeps till my birthday. So on Friday morning, when we got up in the morning, the first words out of her mouth were, Daddy, one more sleep till my birthday. Well, she's counting it, right? She's looking forward to it. She's got a day in mind. And when she understands which day that is, she's ready to count it down. She's excited for the day. Now, she spends all day talking about, my birthday is coming, it's tomorrow. But on Saturday morning, she wakes up, she looks right at her mother and says, am I five now? <laughs> yes, you are. See, the birthday is, in a lot of ways, like any other day that she experiences. Her parents are there. Her parents walk with her. They love her. They're in a relationship with her. But... 
there is something about that day that is appointed as special. Because there's something to celebrate. Because there's something to do. Worship, for us, is an appointment by God to be with God. That we come to this place and we understand that we're two or three are gathered together. God is in our midst in a very specific, very special way. That as we come to this place, we come to meet a God who says, this is where I'll be. Well, but God is always with us, yes. But there is something special in worship and in corporate worship as we gather together as the community of God, as the body of Christ to celebrate our time with God. See, Israel in Joshua chapter 8 has been together for 440 years. And yet, they come to God and say, this is a time to worship. This is a time to build an altar. This is a time because of who we are, We come to God because God invites us into this place and God meets us in this place and we live out what it is that God desires. See, in purpose and in having purpose, our purpose flows from what it is that God tells us, from where it is that God invites us, from what it is that God instructs, from the places where we meet with God, whether it be individually or corporately as a body, we are identified as that. It is an identity that we carry. That worship is a central aspect of what we are. That we come to this place in order to pour out our praise in singing. At this place we come to meet the Lord at the table in communion. That in this place we come to sacrifice and to give back what it is that God has given us. At this time we come to spend time in conversation and in prayer with God who speaks to us. It's at this time that we come to hear what it is that God speaks from the pages of the Bible and what it is that God does. See, each of those things works together to form this worship event that God calls us to, to say, this is a moment of transformation and this is a a moment of renewal to purpose. This tells us who we are and how we live. This informs our worship and shapes our hearts for the week ahead. And what it is that we're going to face. See, as the people of Israel stand there in in Joshua 8, they think back to to what's gone before, but they celebrate this moment because there's so much that God has to offer in the future that they stop to say, we will worship, we will sacrifice, we will seek peace with God, we will seek to give God who we are and what we are. We will seek to live in the identity that God calls us to live in. Uh, In verse 32, we pick it up um, and it says that and there in the presence of the people of Israel, he wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. And all all Israel, sojourners as well as native born with their elders and officers and their judges, stood on opposite sides of the ark before the Levitical priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord half of them in front of Mount Gerizim and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, just as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded at the first to bless the people of Israel. And so when we figure out that we are a people of purpose, how do we begin to engage growth in our lives to say we're going to live within this purpose? Well, we look at that idea and we talk about the idea that the people of God must dwell in purpose. To have purpose is one thing. To know purpose is one thing. But to live entirely, to live in purpose, is to understand, one, the authority of God, two, the surrender of self, three, how it is that we act and how it is that we walk when we walk with God. And it is that with God moment that we see. It's, it's a beautiful picture here in Joshua 8 of Joshua stands up and says, look, Moses told us how to do it. Moses told us what we needed to do and what we needed. So we're going to write the words of the law of God and we're going to make an announcement to the entire nation that this is what's going to happen. Now, if you were to go back and to read in Deuteronomy what it is that they wrote on the on the those stones and what they is that they wrote for people to read, it says that God is leading them into this land because this is the land that God has promised them. That law says These people, these Israelites who have crossed the Jordan River, will live in houses that they didn't build. Well, if you're a Canaanite, you look and go, I built the houses here. They're going to come live in my place? Yes, they are. 
That they will eat food that they did not sow, food that they did not grow, food that they did not... If you're a Gibeonite living in the land, you see those words on the side of those mountains and you go, I grew that food, right? You see that they do this because of what is that God is doing in there. See, the Canaanites understand God is in this place. They know exactly what it is that Israel is going to try to accomplish here. The entire conquest of the land. Right? The amazing thing is, the Israelites don't spend a lot of time in planning battle strategy. They don't spend a lot of time in military training that we can see. We're not told about drills or armor or programming or any of that. What we're told is that they spend most of their time trying to understand and to live the truth that God is at the center of what they do. That the battle belongs to the Lord means God determines what it is that happens and that His people live to their purpose, faithful to walk with God no matter where they're at. That the task for God's people is not to try to assure something in the future, but try to follow God in the moment. It is God who brings the fulfillment of promise. It is God who brings the fulfillment of what we desire. It is God who brings transformation when we as a people understand purpose. And renewal in this moment says, what is our purpose? What is our identity? What do we look like when God is at the center of our lives? What do our families look like when God is at the center of of our lives what does my community my church look like as we've talked about new beginnings we've talked about how many of us want to be part of a thriving growing church right most of us do don't we so what's key to that what's key to that is understanding what god's purpose is for us and committing ourselves to live in that purpose that we have to understand what it is that god is doing God will grow what it is that God's going to grow. We need to learn to follow God. Oh, Bill just said we need to learn too. That doesn't mean that we're not. Poor choice of words, maybe. We renew our ability to follow God. We renew our desire. We renew our commitment to follow where purpose leads us and what purpose has for us. It's easy to get anxious about moments. It's easy to get anxious about situations. It's easy to get anxious about relationships. It's hard to live in purpose. It's hard to hold to purpose when what you're looking at is a battle, when what you're looking at is a land to be conquered, when what you're looking at is a future and you're saying, where are we headed? Well, we're headed into purpose. That's the place that God always calls His people. Verse 34, And afterward He read all the words of the law, the blessing and the curse, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded that Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel and the women and the little ones and the sojourners who lived among them, that they stood and they read through the law. Is that Genesis through Deuteronomy? I don't know. Most likely it's through the book of Deuteronomy, which a lot of us, would be going, they stood there while they read that whole thing, right? They stood there while they, and they're little ones. They're, I don't know if if you heard the thunk at the front a minute ago. That's the, that's our little one who doesn't sit still very, we didn't read the whole book of Deuteronomy. We were singing, right? How hard is that? How difficult is that? It, It is what it is. God's people have a purpose. God's people dwell in purpose. It's what defines them. So what's next? What's next is to look at what Israel did in that place. Israel understood that purpose requires living by a standard. A standard that God provides. The word of the Lord says, this is what you are to be. And this is what you are to do. The word of the Lord says, I am yours and you are mine. The word of the Lord says, Focus on your relationship with me and let that inform your relationship with others. Surrender to me 
And let me guide you through what it is that you need in life. Right? Purpose says God tells us what it is we're going to be. And God tells us what it is we're going to do. And in this particular place, as we look at Joshua chapter 8, what we understand is that they were committed to the book of the law. That they said, this is important enough for us to stop and to study, for us to stop and to listen to, for us to give ourselves to. That it is this law that is going to tell us about our future, where it is that there are blessings, and where it is that there are cursings, and what it is that happens. See, what's next is we continue to listen to what it is that God is doing. That's what I love about the passage. It starts with worship where they come and say, let's meet God and ask God what, what we are, who we are, what we're about. Then they look at themselves and say, we want God to dwell in the center of us. Half of Israel's on one mountain, half of Israel on the other mountain, and the Ark of the Covenant is right in the center of them. And this place as God rests in the middle, what do they do? They read the book of the law. And they say, we can do what God calls us to do. God will fulfill the promises that He's made to us. If we will be the people of God, God will continue to act and continue to work. See, the blessings and cursings are important for us because what Moses said was, in order to live long in the land, in order to prosper, you have to follow where it is that God leads. You have to live in God's purpose. And if you don't, then the curse says, when you choose to walk away from God, God allows you the consequences of your choice. God allows you to do what it is that you desire. See, God doesn't look at you and say, I will make you be mine. God stands and says, I will always offer you an opportunity to be mine. I will always offer you a chance to be mine. The cross of Jesus Christ does not stand over a person and compel them with force or violence or legality or anything else to be Christian or to live forgiven or to accept grace. But the cross of Christ does stand over every man, woman, and child throughout the history of the world and says, you are invited into a relationship with God that saves. Will you choose to live in my purpose? Will you choose to live with me at the center? Will you choose in this moment that relationship and will you choose it forever? See, going forward is about saying today we choose God and tomorrow we will choose God. And tomorrow we will choose God. And we will, we will maintain a focus on who God is and what God is doing. And we will maintain a focus on God being in the center of who we are. But that takes some self-examination. It takes sometimes an idea of the time to stop and to look at who we are and what we're committed to. What is our purpose as a church? Can you answer that question? That's a question I want you to be thinking about for the next couple of weeks. We're going to spend the next sermon series talking about purpose and God's purpose for us and God's purpose in us as a church and as individuals. But it's important for us to ask the question, what is our purpose as a church? What is my purpose as a Christian? What is my purpose as a parent? What is my purpose as a spouse? Do we know what those things are? I think we give a lot of answers to those things. We want to examine some of those answers in light of what it is that God teaches us. But we have to be able to ask the question, what is our purpose? And I want you to spend some time praying through that and asking that. And then I want you to ask, how can I grow with God at the center? If you're living with God at the center now, that's great. Can you grow? Yeah. If you're not living with God at the center now, can you grow? You can make a change and grow. God invites you into that growth. See, God has looked at humanity and God has looked at His church and God has looked at, it, at us as individuals and He said this. He says, I desire that you be mine. And I desire that you be saved. But in order to do that, you have to belong to me. And the purpose of humanity, the purpose of a church, the purpose of a marriage, the purpose of 
good parents, is to belong to the Lord. It is to say, I am yours. And to watch what it is that God does in our lives. And so this morning, we want to give you an opportunity to live in the purpose that God has for you. See, God has said, I want you to be mine. And we have said, I want to be that, but there's all of this stuff in the way. And God says, yes, but I deal with sin and I forgive sin. And on the cross, he did just that. Offered us a chance to live in a place where God has fought our battles, where God has overcome our obstacles, where God has been faithful to his promise to call us into relationship. What does it require? It requires a death to self to say it's not about me. It's not about what I like. It's not about what I think. It's about what the purpose of God is for me. It's about living with God at the center. And so in the waters of baptism, you die to yourself and you're raised to walk in a new life, a life that is entirely defined by the purpose that God has given you. In a new beginning, we always look and say, how is it that I can live with God at the center? How is it that I can live with less anxiety? How is it that I can live with less anger? How is it that I can live as a better spouse or a better parent or as a better? And the answer to all those questions will always be Jesus. It will always be to live with God at the center of who we are. And it begins with a sacrifice. The sacrifice of Jesus. The sacrifice of yourself. I've made that sacrifice and I still struggle. That's what repentance is about. It's about a change in direction. Again, it's a sacrifice. To say I will no longer follow where it is that I've been following, but I will give all that up in order to turn and follow where Jesus leads. This morning, that's the invitation. The invitation to come and to live in purpose. To come and live with God at the center. To come and live a time of renewal. A new beginning. But it is to come right now as we stand. And as we sing. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And that Thou bidst me come to Thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come, I come, just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt. And thrills within and foes without, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am thy love unknown has broken every barrier down now to be thine yea thine alone O Lamb of 
God, I come, I come. Once again, we want to thank everyone for being here this morning. It's been a good morning. Bill, we want to thank you for that lesson. I don't want to reiterate uh, the announcements that Bill made earlier, only to add that our congregational meeting will be on Zoom. We, we hope that everybody is back in attendance, but if you want to participate via Zoom, it'll be handled that way also. I want to turn our attention to our, our prayer list. Um, I won't go through it in total, but I talked to Carolyn earlier uh, this morning and where a couple of weeks ago we thought things with James may be progressing a little bit quicker. It seems like there's a delay with the VA, so we need to keep James in our prayers and that things get moving in the direction that they need to move. And I'm sure everyone's heard James Carrico, not only with the cancer he's dealing with, but now a, a valve that's leaking in the heart that they'll be able to take care of. But that's something in addition to, <clears throat> to James Carrico that we need to be mindful of. Um, would ask you, if you would, um, keep little Hayes Draper, four month old, open heart surgery when he was born and going through a surgery tomorrow to repair some of scar tissue that was you know, created from the previous surgery, but all tests show that should go well. And on the back, we need to keep Jane Ledbetter uh, in our prayers. She had a fall. Uh, ben gives us some information where that is concerned, but please uh, pay particular attention to all of those that are on our prayer list. One other that I would like to mention at this time, um, not in the bulletin, but it's a family member, and the name is Chris Allen. Lost his wife, Janet, roughly two months ago. He's struggling. He's, he's having a hard time. Uh, I know there are those of us here this morning that understand what that must be like to struggle through that. I don't. I, I don't want to know what it's like. I'm happy with Leslie's and my situation as it is right now. But I would ask you, as you pray, remember Chris Allen, Murray. That's the father of Chris Murray, my son-in-law. Just keep him in your prayers that God will show him peace in his everyday life and help him get through this. I'd ask that you do that. I would appreciate that. So before we're dismissed, let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this day that you have given us to come together and worship you. Dear Lord, we know that we're nothing without you, that everything we have, our very purpose, as Bill has mentioned, is through you. You give us everything. You give us life. You give us happiness. You give us even, even the things that we have to deal with that are bad in life. We know, dear Lord, that you are just a big God and that you can handle everything. We just pray that we understand and, and know that we can surrender all those things to you. And there's peace in that knowing you will take care of them. Lord, we ask that you be with everyone who was here this morning. All of those that were viewing online, we pray, dear Lord, that you will continue to bless us all. And that we always are mindful that we need to go out and teach others about you as well.
That's what you tell us to do. The Lord, be with us throughout the remainder of this day. Just, just keep us safe and return us this evening. We pray all these things in your Son's name. Amen.